Adventurers, and welcome back to the Sanctum Sanctorum. Today is the first in our series of class wars. It's where we're going to wage war on the ideals of class in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition and choose our ultimate build for each class. We're going to start with the Barbarian class. Now, the Barbarian class is one of my favorites. The idea that you get to rage out and level your enemies is just always fun. Uh, now, there's different ways that you can always look at these things and different ways you can build a character up. I am looking from a class perspective. I am not focusing in on race, though I've chosen a race for this character. I've chosen background, I've chosen pretty much everything to build this character up. The character sheet's going to be placed on my Patreon page for each of the little steps of level up that we're going to discuss today. So that uh, if you patronize my channel, you're going to get access to those and get to use those in your own campaign or uh, use them as NPCs or whatnot for, for your campaign. Regardless, um, the Barbarian class comes in and lets you choose a character that is built around the idea that they're going to do high damage, take a lot of damage, basically tank out, and give you these options through rage and generally it's a shamanistic or nature kind of attunement with spirits and or magic itself that, that boosters all of this so um i'm going to introduce you to barbaros the barbarian barbaros was born in a to a human mother and orc father tragedy struck early for barbaros his father, a caravan guard, was murdered by a wood elf druid in a bar along his caravan route when Barbaros was only five years old. His mother was heartbroken and was never really able to keep her and Barbaros far from homelessness and starvation. She eventually sickened and died when he was only seven. This put him on the streets of a city where he learned to survive through sleight of hand and stealth and for a number of years that was his life uh, it's not an easy life being a half orc in a city where a lot of prejudice and a lot of hatred for orcs um, exists so a lot of tough times for us a lot of room for backstory and character building if you're going to take this on for yourself now, Barbaros was found on these streets, taken in, shown kindness, shown food, care, how to read, write in common. And then, once again, tragedy strikes. Barbaros is made in his teens, living among monks. These were monks that took him in. And at the monastery, they were kind, they get food, decent labor, and treated him like an equal. The first time in his life, he felt like he belonged. And he communed with nature, and that felt good. And he learned about spirits and magic and the different aspects of the world that he lived in beyond the city. And then raiders came and they burnt that monastery to the ground. And Barbaros was never a violent child despite his work shepherdings. Aggressive maybe, but never violent until this night. When the raiders came and they burned that monastery down and killed the monks who were kind to him. This teenage boy of only 15 learn what it meant to feel rage and hatred. And he slaughtered many of the raiders. But it wasn't enough. He was struck down, left for dead. But from the ashes and fire, he rose. And on the first day, He decided revenge would be his way, but he wanted 
You have to feel the fear he felt on that night. So, tending to his wounds out in the woods, searching for their encampment, Barbaros came upon a bear. This bear had been wounded almost not in hunting or in challenge, but by these very same bandits left for dead. Barbaros took this bear and he put it out of its misery. But he fashioned from its pelt and claws a headdress and gauntlets and a costume of that made him look very much like a bear. And late in the night, fire and a roar of rage, Barbaros went into that Eurydice camp. And when the sun rose, only Barbaros lived and only smoking ruin was left of their camp. And this begins the story of Barbaros, the barbarian. Now, before I get into the details of the level, I uh, how I leveled up Barbaros, I'm going to give you uh, my runners up. Basically, I looked at all the subclasses in the Barbarian class and looked for what would be the best build, best way to deliver Barbaros, this tank of a um, Barbarian. And I looked at first uh, the Path of the Battle Rager. Now, I love this. Anything that translates from Dwarvish uh, as axe idiot. <laughs> uh, because they, battle rages are known as Kajigar. And I know Butcher and Dwarvish. And they rage in a battle in their spiked armor and they're vicious dwarves. And that's a great idea for a uh, barbarian. And it's one that I highly recommend fleshing out if you love to play a dwarf that goes in there and does some damage. And, you know, with beard, a beard, spikes, and an axe in hand, I can not imagine the terror that a raging dwarf would inspire in others. Now, the great thing about uh, these uh, battle ragers is they do co close contact damage with their spiked armor. You can use it as your own little bit of weapon, extra little damage, hurt people while grappling them, all kinds of stuff. But the big ticket item for me was Reckless Abandon. Let's get this at 6th level. Now this is when you use your Reckless Attack while raging. You gain temporary hit points equal to your Constitution modifier. Minimum 1. Um, and they vanish uh, if any of them are left when the rage ends. Now, if you've got a pretty good constitution of four or five and you're going in there wading into this you can be picking up this four or five hit points every round that can mean the difference between survival because those four or five hit points are really ten points of damage for most things if you're not getting hit with magic when you're raging that's reason you, that you're half in slashing damage you're half in bludgeoning damage you're half in piercing damage so all of that is going to come back down and really help you out round after round after round in combat. So, a lot of room for flavor, backstory, uh, shenanigans, and just a very decent combat-oriented barbarian here for you. Now, my other one was the Path of the Wild Soul. And I love this idea because Wild Surge and having this when you rage, suddenly the environment around you changes or some spell effect happens for good or ill. That is beautiful flavor. Connection to the Feywild, not enough Feywild in my opinion in 5th edition. There's a lot of great stuff with this. Easy backstory with this too. You know, change up Barbarossa's background into growing up among the Fey and having been switched at birth. It's classic fate uh, folklore, and he comes back to the mortal realm as an adult, and you know as he rages, some of that fey wild comes with him. 
so that weave crosses and you know some of the great one of the great things about this class is the lingering magic you you light up and you're basically a detect magic you're a magic detector you know you've got the detect magic basically at will you light up in the colors you can really play that in a lot of different ways that's really cool and then the various effects of wild um surge are really cool and then you get at sixth level the ability to channel the uh, magic into people so you can restore spell slots here now that can be really awesome you know it's a, kind of a random thing but it does go up to uh up to uh, i think sixth level um uh, with a d6 at level 14. so you can be restoring some pretty powerful spells to your party or at the very least restoring some hit points because you get five times the dice roll so even if a player doesn't have a fourth level spell or sixth level spell and you roll the max on the die 20 30 temporary hit points that's nothing to sneeze at and then you have arcane rebuke which uh forces you to make a saving throw while you're raging and you can use your reaction to deal a when a creature forces you to make a saving throw, you can use your reaction to hit them with 3d6 force damage. That's awesome. I mean, there's a lot to this uh, flavor-wise uses in this, and it gets your party thinking about what's going to happen when your barbarian is out there raging. And, you know, one of the problems I've seen sometimes is uh, players are too easy to cluster up around a barbarian and when those area effects come in or that massive damage that they can just shrug off uh, comes in that can sometimes be unhelpful you know a particular rogue who enjoys you know that uh, advantage for um, sneak attack off a barbarian so being a little cautious of you know how close am I going to be to this guy when he starts raging what effects going to happen you know, it can change, like, the narrative and the whole story just based on what's getting rolled for that wild surge. So I, I love this. This is really good. But to the meat of what you came for, the ultimate barbarian build. Now, I've chose to go through uh, the build based on the levels where you choose something. So we're going to start our Barbarossa out at third level. Now, I use the standard array. That's 15, 14. 13, 12, 10, and 8 arranged out. I did 15 for strength, 13 for dexterity, 14 for constitution. I did um, 10 for... Um, Intelligence, I don't like playing a stupid character. Just me. You want to drop that uh, 8 in there? Have at it. Uh, basically, the top three here, Strength, Dexterity, and Constitution, are the ones you're going to focus on. And mainly, Strength and Constitution. Your dump stats are Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. In the order of importance, Wisdom is number one. You can alternate intelligence and charisma if you want to be a little more intimidating you want to have that dialogue and things like that dump your, dump your low stat and intelligence and bump up that uh, charisma so you can use that intimidation factor if you want but that's the way I built it 10 in intelligence 12 in wisdom and 8 in uh, charisma figure not a lot of manners in Barbarossa uh, Barbarossa now, so the first thing you get as a Barbarian is Rage. So on your turn, bonus action, first turn, lasts a minute. You get advantage on strength checks and saving throws. So if you want to pull that muscle, ooh, there you go. Already got advantage. When making a melee weapon attack using strength, you get some bonus damage as it goes. Starts off at plus two damage. Now on the low levels, you know, you're going to be finding cobalts and things like that that have like maybe 10 
hit points. You know, if you've got a strength of, a decent strength of 16, that's five damage guaranteed plus whatever you roll on your uh, weapon attack. That could be some serious damage going out to people early on based on that. And, best part, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. That is the majority of the damage you're going to take and as a given. So, right off the bat, awesome. Now, there's certain negatives that you can go You know, if you're wanting to dual cast this Barbarian into really casting spells or doing something, can't cast spells or concentrate on spells while raging. That's a limitation. It only lasts for a minute and it ends early if you're unconscious. You end a turn without attacking or taking damage. Now you can end it deliberately with a bonus action, but why would you? And then you're also limited to a number of ranges until you get to level 20 when you get unlimited ranges. We'll get there eventually. And then that resets, those number of ranges reset after you finish a long rest. So you start off with, uh, what is it, three rages at this point uh, at third level. So that's not too bad because most sessions you're not going to get into more than two or three combats at most. Um, then the other aspect here that you're going to get at first level, from the first level aspect, is unarmored defense. Now when you're not wearing armor, your armor class is 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your constitution modifier. Once again, this is why I emphasized strength, dexterity, and constitution are your key um, stats here. Everything else is frivolous. So this is where you want to focus your ability score improvements throughout. Um, and you get you can use this with a shield. So if you want to add an extra two or you get some magically enhanced shields, two or more on top of that. You know, we've got a con of plus three, a dex of plus one, that's 14. But you add the shield in, that's 16, and you're good to go. Now, some of you might be going, that's not a decent armor class. But in the end, I don't really care about the armor class. Because one, you're already half in most damage you're going to get anyways. But add on top of that, this next feature that you get at second level. When making your first attack on a turn, you can decide to attack recklessly, which is going to give you advantage on your melee weapon attacks using strength during that turn. Now, until the until your next turn, that is going to give your opponents advantage on their attack rolls. So that's a, that's kind of the negative on that. But you come in with big bad barbarian rolling for that you're going to hit almost every time with Reckless. And they, they can't hit you back if they're dead. <laughs> That's the advantage there. And if they are going to hit you anyways, well, they're going to hit you anyways. Uh, now, the next part of the second level uh, features is Danger Sense. Now, this will give you advantage on Dexterity Saving Throws. And dexterity saving throws are pretty much the deck of the saving throw that you're going to be making in 5th edition. Almost every saving throw is going to be dex. And fortunately, pretty much the next most common is con, so you already got that. Now, with this, basically you get advantage on saving throw, dex saving throws against effects that you can see, such as traps and spells, as long as you're not blinded deafened or incapacitated. So that is awesome. Now, um, at third level is when you choose your first primal path. Now this is where you get into your, your subclasses. You know, what are you going to choose? What is going to be the best one? And ultimately speaking, I look through all of them and yeah, you can argue and argue and argue all you want. Remember how I said how awesome being resistant to bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage is? Well, nothing beats being resistant to everything except for psychic damage. Because that's what you get when you choose the path of the totem warrior and you choose for your spirit, animal, 
the bear. While raging, you have resistance to all damage. That's the damage not even named, you know. Sometimes DMs will get sneaky and be, oh, it's bleeding damage. You don't have resistance to bleeding damage. You don't have immunity to bleeding damage, you know, and, or different kinds of damage, fall damage. They can call it whatever they want to get that extra damage in there. But clearly here, it's all damage except psychic damage. Now, unless you're going into Mind Flayers or a few other options, Psychic Damage is relatively rare. Uh, probably I would consider the rarest damage to receive of all the listed damages. You know, you're more likely to get Fire, Acid, Hell, Force. Force isn't even that common and you're, you're going to get Force more often than you're going to get Psychic. Um, so you just become this glutton for punishment and you can just stand there and take it and take it and take it while dishing out that beautiful beautiful tanky damage now that's your first uh, tier of choices at level three so that's where we started off our uh, character sheets our next character sheet just going simply up to level four is when you get an ability score improvement now this is where you get the you get two points to put into your ability scores. You can put two into any one ability or one into to two different abilities. Once again, here we go straight into um, strength and constitution. Because remember, I said I put fifteen in strength, and fourteen in uh, constitution. Well, with a um, background or, or as a race of half work, you get plus two, plus one. So plus two to strength, so up to 17, and plus one to con, up to 15. I'm going to split the difference, bring up the strength to 18, and the uh, constitution up to 16. It gives you a plus four on your attack and damage rolls. And then if you're raging, at this point, you've still got plus two to your damage roll for rage. So that's six points of extra damage at this point. Regardless of what you roll on die, you get that crappy one on your on your roll for your D8, D10, D12. Because if you're rolling less than a D8 and you and you're not rolling two D6 for that great sword, I don't know what you're doing weapon wise for this barbarian. Uh, but anyways, that's gonna pump them up. Now, in addition, because I only got plus one to Dex. And now I got plus three to Colin. Armor class goes up to 14. So, out hardly doing anything, pumping that armor class. Now, our next up is going to be two levels down at level six with uh, a path increase. Now, along the way, at level five, you get the extra attack. Ooh. You know, you thought it was wonderful when you hit him once. Now you get to hit him twice. And with that reckless attack, it counts to bow. So, bam! Bam! They're dead. Even tougher enemies at this point are going to have a hard time taking two hits. That's 12 points guaranteed at this point. And at this point... The path of the totem comes... Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, I forgot. Fast movement is another feature of 5th level. That's 10 extra feet of movement. That's 40 feet for your barbarian. There is not many enemies that are on the ground that he can't reach quickly. <laughs> oh, the 30 feet... The 40 feet away, you can't attack us on the first round. Now I can! <laughs> Oh, DM jokes. Uh, anyways, uh, the path of the warrior for this one is the aspect of the beast. This is where you choose another totem animal. And now for this one, you've got some options. I am not as you need to choose this one as I am for that first one, the bear. Always the first one needs to be the bear because that gives you your half on everything. Resistance to all damage except psychic. For this one, I chose bear as well because it doubles your uh, your carrying capacity and it gives you advantage on strength checks to push 
pull, lift, or break objects. You know? Now, the eyesight of the eagle, see a mile away, see things in complete detail, dim light doesn't impose disadvantage on your wisdom checks, perception checks, that can be useful as heck. And if you're in a campaign where that seems really awesome, go for it. Uh, now, the, here's the, the one that really is, makes a decision tough is wolf. You gain hunting sensibilities of wolf. You can track other creatures while traveling at a fast pace and you can move stealthily while traveling at a normal pace. Now that's a pretty cool thing. Now remember how I added the urchin background? One of the things the urchin gets as part of its background is proficiency in stealth. This makes your barbarian added to the little feature where they could be a scout. You know, they run into some serious trouble. Now they've got that 40 feet of movement, so they can run away faster than most people in the party, short of a monk. You know, especially if you've got a wizard that's going to put haste on them. You know, they can sneak in spots and ambush people. You know, if you need to take out one guy or kidnap one guy, uh, you know, muffle them up and grapple them out, sneak away. <laughs> You know, having that ability for some stealth is going to be pretty awesome. So that's that can be pretty cool. You know, ability to track others while traveling at fast pace. Now that's also, depending on how your campaign is going, where it's going, this can be a great one. But I always look at it as characters are loot monkeys. And... Everyone ends up carrying way too much. They overburden themselves. And there you have this barbarian who could be your pack mule. Carry everything for you. Can lift huge loads. And you never know when you might need to break down a door, lift something up, pull something. You know, you've made a sled or a cart, but you don't have a or donkey and you've got this dragon's horde that you need to haul out and being able to pull a little bit better just going to make that so much easier to get that stuff out and transport it so that's kind of where I went with that one wolf is a good secondary and there are some other options that are presented out or if you want to get creative with it and talk to your DM and see if there's something else that works for your campaign always try that now we're going to move on to level eight uh, for our next tier up for a choice. Now at this point, uh, seventh level gave you Feral Instinct. That's where you gain advantage on initiative rolls. If you rage before anything else on your turn, you cannot be surprised at the beginning of combat as long as you're not incapacitated. So when DM yells, surprise, the goblins jump out, you know, Barbarian goes, Wah! Rages out, he's in that surprise round. Or at least he doesn't get hacked. You know, take less damage, being ready, being able to hit first. That can always be huge. But at this point, level eight, the choice comes in at the ability score again. Now, we did our uh, last ability score one to strength, one to con. Got uh, strength up to 18 con up to uh, 16 so I'm going to pump all two into strength and give us 20 now at this point that's plus 5 to your your damage rolls while you're raging that's plus 7 with the extra rage damage now that is some beautiful beautiful damage to add in with Average being on a um, D12, 6 or 7 in that range. So you're talking about 13, 14 points of damage if you're hauling around that great axe. You know, uh, 6 if you're all around a uh, great sword because you can get 3 on each 6 set die for average. Uh, that is awesome. You know, especially with regular special, a couple attacks. 
26 points damage. You know, that's most creatures' hit points. And if not, that's a good fourth of it. With the rest of your party hitting in, that's taking somebody down quick. And with you halving all damage, two, three turns, just you hitting the big bad in the combat, you're going to be taking them down. So, let's move on to level 12, because it's going to be a while before you have another choice. Now, at level 9, now this is a great level. Level 9 is wonderful. You get Brutal Critical. Now, that gives you an extra damage die for your melee attack on a critical. So, you're rolling a uh, D12 for the Great Axe, that's 2D12. But, remember, we chose the half work for the race. They get a Savage Attack, which adds on critical hits an extra D12. So at this point, you're rolling 3D12 when you hit a critical. That is me. Once again, I said the average is about six or seven. Let's go on the low end. That's 18 as a given on the die. Now, if you're like a lot of DMs and you just double the damage die on a critical, that's 36. But even not, even not, you're just doubling the number of die you get. That's still 60, 12 to roll. Ooh, mean. <laughs> now, then, at level 10, you get another Path of the Totem Warrior. Now, this one doesn't really have a choice. It's the Spirit Walker. Now, it allows you to commune with nature. And it gives you some advantage on learning about the nature of the environment around you. You get to do it as a ritual spell, so it takes a little bit longer, 10 extra minutes than whatever's on the um, spell casting time. And then you have uh, the ability to, where is it? Uh, oh yeah, it comes out as one of the animals you've chosen. So bear, wolf, whatever you've, you've been choosing, choosing, comes out to convey the information to you. Then one of the best ones for level 10, or level 11 is Relentless Rage. If you drop to zero while raging and you don't die outright, you can make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. If you succeed, you drop to one hit point instead. Each time you use this after the first increases it by five, the DC by five. Now remember, you're proficient in con saves. At this point, you have 16 that's a plus three, plus four for for precision AC. That's plus seven. So you would have to roll as low as three uh, on the die. You'd have to roll lower than three to fail this first roll. And if you roll average, which is ten on each twenty, you're pretty much guaranteed two of these. But even better yet. Because we chose the uh, half work, you get an ability with half works called Relentless Endurance. When you're reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright, you can drop to one point instead, and then you have to do a long rest. So what you can do is if you're you're getting down to the last of your strength, your hit points for whatever reason, and you get knocked unconscious. Relentless Endurance, back to one. That gives you another option, hopefully to attack and knock off whoever's hurting you. But even so, even not, you get knocked again. You've got Relentless Rage. Because when aren't you gonna be raging? Then, that's not done though. You can use it again and try for that 15. And by the time you get to DC 20, ooh, I don't think you're gonna make it, but still shot. So, this can keep you going forever. Now I wanna also add in, I forgot, your rage damage is gonna go up to three um, 
at um, level 9. And back at level 6, your ranges went up to 4. I didn't mention that, I'm sorry. Uh, and here we go as an additional aspect here to add good news to good news. At this point, you get another ability score. That's where the choice comes in at level 12. Well, my choice would be pump that into constitution. You're, all, you're increasing your hit points, increasing your armor class by one, and on top of that, you're increasing your likelihood of staying alive if you get to that point. So it's a good, it's a good choice. Now we're coming up to level 14 for our next tier. That's where our brutal critical goes to two dice. So remember the half-orc, we get one. So we're hitting four D12 at this point. So you got your original, you got your brutal critical, and you got your orc ability. And then you get another brutal critical. 4d12. That is mean. And at level 17, you're going to get some more. We'll get to that soon enough. But you get your tomatic attunement at this level to choose. Now, this you choose bear, eagle, wolf again. Now, with bear, as long as someone's within 50, 5 feet of you, and they try to attack somebody else that doesn't have this feature, they get disadvantage on their attack roll. Now, if they can't hear you, they can't see you, or they're immune to being frightened, this doesn't affect them. Then there's Eagle. While raging, you gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed. So 40 feet to fly. Now, not having that range, especially when somebody goes and flies off and, ha ah, ha I'm flying, you can't hit me now. Well, Eagle kind of levels that playing field, but you will fall if you stay aloft. Now, I don't care about this. 40 feet is 4d6 on the bludgeoning fall damage. So unless there's something extra that's gonna hurt you when you fall, you're going to take 4d6. That's 24 at maximum. Already going to be half down to 12. Well worth doing whatever damage you're going to be able to do to whoever's able to fly out of your range. And then you have Wolf. While you're raging, you can use a bonus action on your turn to knock a large or smaller creature prone when you hit with a melee weapon attack. Now, that can be very useful in a lot of ways, you know. I don't want people to poo-poo this going, well, the advantage you get over somebody with melee that's prone is kind of put out because you're using that reckless attack all the time. It doesn't matter. There are situations where being able to knock someone prone and get them down can really be advantageous to how you do, do combat. So I wouldn't put anything past this one. But in the end, the one I would choose for this is Eagle because that bit of flight can make the difference between your party's down, they're out, they're heading towards a TPK, you're the only one left, and you've got this wizard with barely a hit point left that's flying 30 feet above you. You know, that last little burst of flight to hit that guy twice, you're gonna tear him apart, he's gonna fall out of the sky, party's gonna be saved, you're the hero of the day. That's the way to go with it. Now, uh, level 16, uh, level 15, you get Persistent Rage. It doesn't end until you fall unconscious or if you choose to end it. So this gives you options in combat you didn't. You had to attack or get hurt or your rage would end. Now it just keeps going. But remember, there is an, a disadvantage here that a lot of people might miss. Your rage only lasts a minute. You have to use that bonus action again after a minute. That's 10 rounds. It's a long time before you have to just use a bonus action. There's not a lot of bonus action going on here. Now, that being said, our choice for this level is the ability score modifier. And once again, we're going right back to Constitution. This is bringing you up to 20. Now, that's a plus 5. So, 
your dexterity is still one, your cons plus five, and your base armor class is ten. So that means your armor class is sixteen. Some people, oh, that's not that great. Regardless, you get ambushed at night, everyone's out of their armor, you don't have to worry about that. You as a barbarian can fight naked and still get 16 on your armor class. Not have to worry about spells or anything. Add a shield in there, you're at 18. It can be some good stuff. And, you know, 18 is plate armor. You don't have any disadvantages on movement. So, that's why I really like this build. Now, we're going to jump all the way to level 19. Now, level 19, along the way we get to level 17, and we see the Brutal, brutal Critical go up to 3 dice. So you hit a critical hit, you get your original D12 for your Great Axe, 3 more D12s, for the Brutal Critical, and then your Orc pops in another one. That's 5d12, level 17, every time you crit. This is why Reckless Attack is, from the beginning, one of the best advantages you have. Before you even get Brutal Critical at level 9, this is why I chose half Orc, you have an extra damage die for when you roll those 20s. You have a 10% chance with advantage every time to roll, you attack, to roll a nat 20, to get that hit. Also, when you get put in those situations of disadvantage on your attacks, that's gonna wash out with that reckless attack, and you're gonna have a straight hit, which by the time you get up there, you know, you're doing plus six, plus seven. At this point, I think it's plus 11 to your damage. You ain't worried about missing anybody. And then at level 18, you get Indomitable Might. Now, this is a great one for almost any time you're going to use your, your strength. Break down a door, lift something, get an arm wrestling contest, anything like that. If your strength total for a, if your total for a strength check is less than your strength score, you can use that score in its place. I rolled a 1. So that's one plus five, that would be six. Oh, darn. I'll just go with 20. Because your strength is at 20. Just like Reliable Talent, this gives you that kind of same beat with strength. And Donald Might can come in handy in a lot of ways. Think of all the times and ways you can use strength checks to help your party or do some fun stuff. And then once again, we get to our fifth ability score improvement. At this point, I pump it all into dexterity. Gives us plus two. Now, you might be saying, why not pump it in anything else? Well, everything's going to come uneven. And at this point, I'm hoping you have some sort of magical item or something, like a tome to pump up your, your decks a little bit more and help flavor this up a little bit. But even at 15 with plus 2, that's plus 7 to your uh, base armor class. That brings you to 17 for your armor class. It's a pretty good armor class. Add in a shield, you're at 19. That's some good stuff. Then um, we go over to level 20. Now, level 20 doesn't really give you a choice, but I included it here because I wanted to mention some of the fantastic things that happened at level 20 and why I built the character this way. It comes to this point. One, you get unlimited rages. There is no holding back at this point. You know, to this point, you had up to six times in a day you could rage. You know, when you get to 15th and you get that persistent range, that can hold on to a rage for a very long combat if you've got one of those slogs of a combat that's just so many turns. Or somebody that's just, they're annoying because they're not really killing you, but they're, they're slow in combat enough that you're running out of rage, which can really nerf your character. 
when you get to this point, it's unlimited. So all you got to do is worry about a minute going by and hitting that reset button with your bonus action. That's awesome. Now, also at this point, you've got plus four to your um, range damage. Well, that brings us to our next point, Primal Champion. This increases your constitution and your strength by four, with your maximum now being 24. So those, all those buffs back there where I'm buffing strength and con exclusively to get them up to 20, that was good for this moment. Because now you have a plus seven to strength checks, plus seven to constitution saving throws. Now, that brings you up to plus 13 to any constitution or strength saving throw. Fan fucking tastic. This is where it comes in. You are now the penultimate barbarian. Now, like I said, you have two to your decks, seven to your con. That means your armor class is up to 19. The shield thrown in, that's 21, and that's without any magic buffs or help building up your decks along the way. This makes your character mean. That seven to strength, plus the six in proficiency, gives you a two, an attack bonus of plus 13. That means that basically, short of coming across a dragon or some really high level things, you got to roll five or better to hit almost everything in this game. Add that with your reckless, bam. Now, once again, you got plus seven to strength, plus four to your rage, that's plus 11 points of damage just for hitting something. Now, that being the case, you have some fantastic uh, options to really hurt people. And like I said, if you crit, that's adding 5d12 <laughs> if you're using the great axe, which I highly recommend with a barbarian. Great sword maybe with the 2d6, but I find the balance of, um, of it to be that you come out better with the great axe. You can argue that one or not. But here's the amazing part. At this end point, when I rolled uh, life for, uh, or hit points for Barbaros, I got to 235 hit points. Now, the median for, like I said, for a Barbarian, rolling a d12 for hit points is 6.5. That means for each level you roll, you're going to get 6.5 on average. Now add in your con modifier, which should be 2 or 3. That's 8 or 9 per level. So that gets pretty awesome. But like I said, here at the end with the Primal Champion, you just upped 4, which means you get 2 additional modifier, which means that you that's 40 hit points. You're going to stack onto your monster of a build at the end here. 140 hit points based on constitution alone. That is nothing to sneeze at. Most other players aren't going to have that total. And then you're going to add 20 times whatever your average is, which is 100 and... Uh, that's 130. So 250 is basically average for this. I got to 235. So you're going to break 200. You get real close with your Barbarian by this point. But that means that you're going to be so high in hit points. You're probably be double whatever the high, next highest person is in your party. You're going to take half damage for pretty much everything. And then you're going to weigh it all into battle with a lot of damage 
And if you should crit, oh my god, the damage just becomes so much worse. That is why the Totem Warrior is the Totem of the Bear Warrior for a Barbarian class is the best ultimate build for a Barbarian. Now you, hopefully you'll like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, whether you agree with me or not. So if you're a special person, you'll go over to the Patreon page and, and become a patron. But regardless, put your comments in. What did you like? What didn't you like? Where do you agree with me? What do you want to debate? Do you have questions? Let me know. I'll try to respond if I can. Upvote comments so I'm, you see them easier. Get that dialogue going. I'm not the best in response. I'm not going to promise that. But I will try to be. Now, the only thing I ask when you comment is not to be rude. You know, don't make fun of people, something. Keep it on topic. Keep it on the content. I prefer us to support each other and be polite. And if you have to target someone, target me. It's the channel. So, go after me. I'm an easy target. I'm the one up here saying, ooh, I'm smart. I know what the best field is. Well, you can break that down pretty easy without being rude or cruel or um, using things that aren't really making your point. So I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell as well. Thank you for tuning in. The next class war is going to be with uh, Bar Bards. And uh, thank you, and keep the adventure going.